I want to say something to all you Alaskans out there, you Alaskan gals and guys. Remember when you were a little kid and mom and dad thought you were this perfect little angel? Hey, you knew that you weren't, right? You had that one crazy uncle, the one that should have probably a hundred years ago been locked up in the attic, eh? You go over to his house and all bets were off. Uncle Frank knew you weren't no saint, but neither was he, so he wasn't going to rat you out. But when you'd come home, you'd put on that innocent act with mom and dad. You knew while you were towing the line with mom and dad, Uncle Frank and his spawn were running wildly. Eh? Well, I got a shock for you. It's a lot like that with Juno. Your politicians act like cherubs when they're in your meetings. But when they're in Juno, out from under your eyes, they're running hog wild and pig crazy. And while they're at home, their hill spawn lobbyists are still down in Juno running hog wild and pig crazy. Think about it the next time you vote. And remember, Juno ain't pulling for you. So you'd better all get together. Thank you, Mr. Blue Gold. Welcome to the Bruce Walden Show, the show that dares to ask the question, can we just be honest? I'm going to get a whole mouthful of honesty today, folks. I know some of the people out there are starting to resent that. Here's a little bit of honesty for you. I'm running just ahead of a flu or something. I've been trying to outrun it for a few days. Sorry, liberals, that hasn't killed me yet. So I've got some uh, Ricola standing by. That was not an endorsement by Ricola, just so you know. But in case I have to pop one and you hear it rattling around in my mouth, I apologize. I think that's very rude when people do that, but I got some information to put out that I think that you need to hear. So, Alaska, you've been lied to so many times that you keep, but you keep sending the same people to Juno, and they just keep on lying to you. They go down there and they turn around and lie to you. And when they're caught in a liar, when we point out their lies, if they're your favorite son or daughter, the, the defense is always, oh, no, that was the media. They made them out to be liars. But it's not always that way. Now, be advised, I'm not a big fan of the media. You saw what just happened to Tucker Carlson. I'm not trying to put myself in his, in his, at his level, all right? But he told the truth, and see what it got him? That's one of many reasons I'm not on some news station. One thing, they wouldn't have me there anyway. But, folks, it's time for you to get the unadulterated, the unabridged truth about things. So we're going to talk about the capital move here. Now... I will, it, it, we'll take a little time on this, so just be advised. That's what we're going to be talking about. Get ready to put your, your big boy pants and your big girl pants on and get ready to hear some truth. Most of you will agree with what I say by a margin of probably roughly 60%. See what I'm talking about. But you still let your elected representative get away with lying to you. At some point, if you continue to watch these blogs, at some point, the light is going to come on in your head and you're going to say, you know what? I might have known this person all this time, but we got to get somebody else because they're not getting the job done. So we'll talk about that a little bit. Strange about that, though, how that when somebody points out the, uh, our, well, I've known this person so long, blah, blah, blah. And when somebody points out that they are lying to you and they're going back on their word to you, half the time our people say, well, yeah, but uh, there's an excuse for my guy, but not your guy, not that guy or gal. You got to get past that, folks. You're being ripped off, and I'm being ripped off, and I'm bloody tired of being ripped off. I don't know about you. So let's go through a, a semi-brief history of Alaska's capital. Of course, back in the uh, when we when we bought the place from the Russians, uh, Sitka was of course the um, the capital. And I will be, God willing, very soon we will be filming a well at first a crowdfunding video that is um, supposedly in Sitka. It's not really. But eventually we will be filming uh, what I hope will be, a, uh, hopefully, Angel Studios, wink, wink, pretty much, um, video. And it'll be filmed partially in Sitka. The story takes place in Sitka. If any of you have read my book, uh, The Sacred Relics, that's the one we're talking about. So we're kind of, things are progressing on that. And to all my friends out there that are movie buffs, um, you all know who I'm talking to. Ma'am, thank you for helping me to find actors, and James, my good friend, and all of you who have helped me in this endeavor. We're just getting started, man. You ain't seen nothing yet. Anyway, that was an aside. I apologize. The territory, or excuse me, the District of Alaska, we took on Juneau as our capital around the turn of the century, back in the district days before we became a territory. 
But by the time we uh, got around to becoming a territory in 1912, Juneau was very well established as the capital of the uh, of the territory. You know, it kind of makes sense that the city of Juneau. I don't remember the other guy's name, but there was a uh, there was a, a bet, and um, a guy won a bet and had the city named after him. His name obviously was Juneau. Now we had Juneau as our capital back in those those, those days because it made sense. It was the uh, biggest city in the state or, or in the territory for a while, and it was right there where all the action was. The 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 uh, the Klondike was going on there, you know, nearby, and uh, everybody's coming through the panhandle of Alaska to get to the Yukon, and then eventually, you know, it moved on to Nome and everything, but by this time, the the territory's population was kind of centered around on the panhandle, what we call the panhandle in the southeast. In those days, though, it made sense for Juneau or Sitka to be the capital, because that's where all the gold was, that's where all the people was, that's where the timber was, a lot of fish and stuff, so forth. Of course, capital... Uh, moving the capital to Nome when the uh, gold rush moved out there wouldn't have made any sense at all because you had one town and everybody else was back there on the panhandle. So, in 1912, a man who's a hero of mine, James Wickersham, became the Alaska Territory's first non-voting delegate to Congress. And he proposed the first statehood bill in 1916. Remember that as we roll along here. And it was 43 years before that came to fruition. But in 1916, the same year, I believe, that Oklahoma became a state, I believe that's right, um, he said, you know what, we can do that. And he put up the uh, first statehood bill, 1916. That's 107 years ago now. And But it took 43 years. We finally got there. Over the teen years and into the early 20s, the Alaska Railroad was built and actually uh, was finished uh, in 1923, uh, when they finished the Tanana River Bridge, and that's when um, President Harding came up, drove the um, the Golden Spike. If you haven't been up to Alaska land up in Fairbanks, the presidential uh, Pullman car is sitting there, and that's the one that uh, the president used right before he woke up dead one day. That's a whole other story we'll talk about some other time. Read my books, and you'll find out about that. Uh, I believe I wrote about that in my book, uh, There's No Such Thing as Can't. It might have been in where you warned. But the construction of the railroad that started, you know, way back when, or, you know, depended on what you call the start of that railroad, because there were different pieces to it before it eventually became what we now have. Um, the when, it, when they decided we're going to have one that goes all the way from Seward to Fairbanks and now beyond, that kind of was the thing that lit the fire that created Anchorage and Wasilla. Palmer didn't come along for a little while later. But there it was, and then there was the railroad, and then suddenly all the population began to accumulate in this area. And it made sense when Palmer and the Matanuska, the borough, uh, started becoming prominent because it made sense for us to farm this area. Of course, it was a colonial experiment, and it was a socialist experiment, and I despise socialism, but it is what it is, not what we wish it was, okay? And what it is right now is a system that, frankly, has... I won't say failed, but we could have done a lot better, and we will one day, God willing. But by the 1930s and going on into World War II, it was clear that it was time that we probably needed to move the capital, and we needed to move to south-central Alaska because the population had shifted to our area right here. Now, it needed to be in south-central because here was Anchorage, Palmer, Wasilla, Knick, Eklutna, all these towns, and Matanuska, it used to be there. Well, it still is there, but it's a ghost town, basically. Um, and all the others up and down the, the railroad, it made sense for us to have the uh, capital on the rail belt. But I think by this time, by the end of World War II, we had territorial uh, legislators that are starting to realize, man, we got a good thing going on here. We can sit down here in Juneau, and we can wield power, we can make money, and hide. And we can get away with just about anything. By this time, there was aviation going in and out of Juneau, and of course, there were boats. And they got away with a lot of things, and I don't know how crooked they were back in those days, but I know that they became crooked long as, as we ran along and became a state and right on up till now. Hate me if you want to, I don't care. It began to be realized, though, that we needed a new capital but at the same time, those people realized they didn't want to move. So that might be something to think about. They were safe in Fortress, Ala uh, Fortress Juno. They didn't want to move. Okay. 
Then statehood came along January 3rd, 1959, and Juneau was accepted as the state capital. Prudhoe Bay began to change things, much as World War II had back in its time, and attention shifted deeper into south-central Alaska, specifically Anchorage, uh, which went from a decent-sized little, um, little town or a small city to a population of a quarter of a million. Now, this is when Bruce got here. I got here in 1981, and right at the end of the, of the pipeline boom, but by the, from the point where we started building the pipeline to the time that the pipeline was finished, the population of Anchorage more than quadrupled in, in a very short time. Now, back in those days, there were about 500,000 people living in Alaska when I got here in the early 80s. So half the population lived in Anchorage, but only half. More on that later. Now, here we are in a state, we got a population of around 730,000. That's not that many, but we're not the smallest in population like we were back in those days. But half the state's population lived here then, but there's more than that here uh, living here now uh, as a percentage. If you throw, right now, Anchorage and the Matanuska Borough together have a population of around 400,000. If you have Anchorage Municipality and the Matsu Borough, 400,000 out of 730,000 people. And if you throw in the Kenai, you got about 450,000. Probably it's closer to 500,000. So basically two thirds of the state live within a drive of where I'm sitting right now. Now, the Panhandle population, an area roughly the size of old Indiana, maybe, has a population of 71,616 as of when I checked it earlier today. 71,616, that's roughly the, 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 the panhandle's roughly the size of Indiana, the state where I grew up. And I know, trust me when I tell you, I have no longing to go back to Indiana, but that's where I was born, and I think of the population of Alaska as how it compares to Indiana. So here's a couple of things to think about. you got the panhandle, the size of Indiana, and it has a population of 71,616. That's... Um, that's about the same, that's slightly less people than lived in Howard County, Indiana, where I grew up. Less people on the entire panhandle, which is the size of Indiana, less people live there than live in Howard County, Indiana. You want to know how big Howard County, Indiana is? It's 293 square miles. Are you starting to see the problem now? Are you starting to get it? You have, representing the city of uh, and borough of Juneau, you have what I think uh, three, uh, four, I think four representatives and two senators from right there, and you have forty or thirty-six representatives and uh, twenty, I'm sorry, eighteen senators from outside of Juneau that have to commute there some way or another, and they have to be paid per diem while they're down there. Are you starting to catch on yet? Are you starting to see what the problem is yet? I hope so. In 1960 and 1962, campaigns to move the capital to the Anchorage area failed by just, just over 50% of the vote. In other words, just over 50% of the people voted not to move the, the capital. A gubernatorial commission decided that the capital should be at least 30 miles from Anchorage and or Fairbanks. So having it in Anchorage, that's a non-starter. Having it in Fairbanks, non-starter. But having it somewhere on the rail belt, yeah, that's a good idea. Now, some people have suggested Ruby and places like that where there are roads that could be improved to get us there. That's not a bad idea. But I'll tell you my idea, and you can think what you want of it. In the year of our nation's bicentennial, 1976, Alaskan voters chose Willow as the new state capital with 53% of the vote. In 1978, the people were asked to vote on whether or not to spend $966 million in debt or become indebted for that amount to move the capital. 55% said yes. And when the price moved north of a cool billion, they voted it down. Amazing about that, isn't it? And who was the one that uh, decided it was that much? Now, remember this date, folks. I said 1978, it was decided that it would probably go over a billion. Uh, somewhere around there. 78, 80-ish. In 1982, the price was increased to $2.9 billion. You see where we're going here? And the voters again rejected it. In 1994, the state voted to move the capital to Wasilla. 55% of the people voted yes. 
but required very wisely that the cost be stated plainly and be um, itemized. Again, a no-go. In 2005, there was a contest to replace the state capitol building uh, to be placed on Telephone Hill in Juneau. Five designs were advanced. Not one of those were designs that spring from the brow of any Alaskan. These were all people from New York and California designed Alaska State uh, Capitol building, but still it was to remain in Juneau. Here's the Alaska State Capitol building. Not a bad looking building, but it doesn't scream capital. I saw an episode of ALF. You remember the old show ALF? And uh, Willie Tanner had gotten in trouble because they it was believed that he was living in a double marriage, that he was married to uh, his wife and then some other woman, and they took it to court. And the picture that they showed that was supposed to be the, the county courthouse was the Alaska State Capitol. Go look it up. I think it's in the last season. So among the pro proposed buildings was this one right here. I see a dome, but upon closer observation, you realize it's an egg. It's shaped like an egg. What kind of an egghead came up with that goofy design? And again, remember, these people work from around here. There's a, a lady named Marion Casado who graduated from West High. She's now a successful architect in New York. As a matter of fact, a very successful architect in New York. But she's from here. She's one of us. She's a homegirl, and she designed this Capitol building. Right here is a front view of said building. Now, this was designed to sit on Telephone Hill also. As, and here's a side view of it right here. The only thing I would change if Marianne, if you see this, the only thing I'd change is I'd want the, if you folks see the, the blueprints of this, the floor plan, I would want a, a big old gallery where people could sit over the, the Senate and the House and say, no, we're watching you. You're not getting away with this. And while your little cutworm lobbyists are running in there and trying to change your minds, we'll be watching that too. You see how it works, folks? But it reflects our Russian heritage and it looks like an Alaskan building. The one down in Juneau, yeah, that's nice. It looks like a nice office building. I'm not saying it's ugly, but we can do better. Our governor's mansion is a stately and a nice building, but it looks more like it should be in antebellum Georgia than up here. I'm sure that whoever designed it, they, they put their heart into it, and, and it's not a bad building. It's a beautiful building, but you can't pick it up and move it. Well, you can. I mean, they move the London Bridge to Arizona. You can do anything that you want to do, but I would propose something different to my way of thinking. I think that it should uh, the our governor's mansion should reflect the heyday of Alaska, the the um, Klondike period, the gold rush period. Now I'm partial to a building, and I know you say, "Oh, Bruce, you sound like a Hoosier." Trust me, I'm part of the diaspora. I don't want anything to do with that place except that's where my family lives. But there is a beautiful building in um, uh, Kokomo where I grew up, and it's called the Sieberling Mansion, and it's this picture right here. Very beautiful building. And I actually got the floor plans for, for it. And I think there's 11,000 square feet. And it seems to me that I read somewhere that the uh, governor's mansion is 14,000. The one that's in Juneau, that might not be right. I've got the figures down here. We'll talk about them after a brief break for station identification here shortly. But whether, yeah, you know, let's assume that we move the capital. I think it should be put up to the people to decide what they want their capital building and the, the, uh, the governor's mansion and so forth to look like, but you do want them to be impressive. So let's don't be stupid. Um, now, back when uh, Governor Hammond was governor and we voted to move the Capitol to Willow, some folks got together and built him a one-room cabin and he was cool with that. Well, we don't have governors like that anymore, do we? I can think of one guy that ran for governor last year that was willing to live in a tent because he's used to that kind of thing. More on that some other time. As always, Alaska, your government has lied to you over and over and over and over. Then they call you a fool because you sit there and smile at them while they lie to you. And they know that you know that they're lying to you. They're laughing at you. Recently, I was at a meeting and somebody said, well, why are our legislatures doing this and that? And I and I had our legislators doing this or that. And I said, it's because they're liars. And a couple of men took exception. They were very gentlemanly about it. And these gentlemen are friends of mine. And they weren't like being, you know, mean, anything like that. But they took friendly exception to it. But here's the thing, folks. If somebody comes in and says, you know what? I just murdered somebody in cold blood over here. And you say, well, then you're a murderer. They just told you 
that they murdered somebody. You're not being judgmental. If somebody comes in and says, you know what, I just robbed a bank over here, you're not being judgmental to call them a thief. When somebody looks you in the eye and lies to you, knowing that you know that they know that you know that they're lying to you, they're a liar. You can church that up any way you want to, but that person's called a liar. Now, that's just the way it is. Now, we're going to take a quick pause for self-identification, Alaska. We'll see you in just a moment. Alaska, you're beautiful. You're awesome. You're very, very powerful. Now act like you deserve better. And welcome back to the Bruce Walden Show. Now, I want you to go out, and I should have mentioned this before the break. Get you, pause this, get a calculator, okay? Get you a pencil, get you a chunk, a big chunk of paper. And we're going to talk, there, uh, there'll be some stuff left out, but this is just to give you an idea how much you've been lied to. We're going to talk about the size of the uh, different buildings, and we're going to talk about what it would cost to, um, if we built a capital from the ground up, I'm not talking about turning some other city into the capital, capital but rather if we built one from the ground up, how much it would wind up costing? Because there's land out here in the Sioux City in the Valley that's available to be used for a capital. And it could be designed, it could be laid out like they did the U.S. Capitol back in the 18th century when they laid it out and said, this is how we want our capital to look, this is how we want it to work. So let's talk about some things. The governor's mansion, as we have it right now, I think is 13,000 square feet, 14, 13, 14, somewhere around there. Now, the cost of construction now is hovering somewhere between 200 and 250, maybe a little more, but we're going to assume 200. But for something like a governor's mansion, you want it to be stately and you want it to be impressive. You want it to blow people away when they see it. And they, you want people to look at it and say, there's power here. Because Alaska, just like Man Moose said, you're powerful. Now you need to act like it. We'll get there. So if you took, let's say, 10 times the normal, uh, uh, the typical cost of construction, so $2,000 per square foot for, let's say, a 13,000-foot mansion. That's $26 million, okay? Let's say you build a nice uh, big house for the lieutenant governor. If it were up to me, it would be a big, gigantic cabin. So now you have the gold rush period represented, but you've also got the, um, with the uh, you know, the, the rustic Alaska thing going on. Let's say it's 8,000 feet. Big, nice, beautiful house. $2,000 per square foot. That comes to sixteen. Okay, let's see. You got a Capitol building. I now I read somewhere uh, a few days ago where it was twenty four thousand uh, square feet, but it seems to me like I read that it was seventy two thousand. So we're going to go with a bigger number, and if I'm wrong, it'll be less than what I'm about to quote. And again, when people see your state Capitol building, you want them to be like duly impressed. So let's say we put up two thousand dollars per square foot for that. That comes to one hundred forty four million dollars legislator quarters. Now, here's something that <laughs> I don't know why this isn't being done. You have 60 legislators who go to, well, I mean, you have 60 legislators and about five, four or five of them live in Juneau. The rest of them have to travel there. Well, if you had a, a capital up here, most of the legislators in the state, roughly half of them will live within a drive of that state capitol building. So they don't need a place to live. But you will have people coming from the Panhandle. You'd have people coming from Nome and, and Bethel and like that. And what I would propose is to build a like a three-story uh, apartment building. And each apartment is nice and big, about 2,500 square feet. That's a pretty good-sized house for a visiting legislator. And he's got a, he or she has a nice office in there at, where they can do their business. And But when they're in session, that's where they live. They don't get per diem. If they want to build a house, rent a house, buy a house to live in while they're in session, that's on them. But I say you move them into this thing and they get zero per diem. You think how much money that'll save you, Alaska. But let's say you don't build this thing to be stately because you just have visitors that come in there. It's basically a great, big, nice hotel. And let's say you pay $700 per square foot, which is roughly three times what the typical cost of a construction is. If you have... Um, well, it would come to, you run the math, it'd come to about 75,000 square feet. 
2,500 uh, square feet per visiting legislator. It comes around there, 25 to 30 legislators. Okay, that comes to about $42,500,000. Let's say you have a, a uh, legislative office building. Um, it'd be about 40,000 square feet, somewhere around there. That'd be plenty of room. The one that they rebuilt in Anchorage to uh, be the office of our people when they're in session in Juneau, they've got their offices here. They revamped a building. I think they paid $22 million for that. And then after one time trying, they said, this is too small. We need something else. So they handed it over to the Anchorage police. I'm glad they handed it to them, but they wasted your money. And then they laughed at you. They laughed. They rolled over. Strange how that studies and weird things that happen in Alaska always seem to cost $22 million. I'm in the wrong business. But let's say you had that, and it's $700 per square foot, $28 million, okay? Let's say you have a 10,000-foot Supreme Court building. Let's say you, again, you want it to be nice, and you want it to be impressive. Let's say you pay $2,000 per square foot. That's $20 million for that one. You got a military headquarters building of 10,000 feet. That's where the top generals and uh, so forth, uh, the, the Coast Guard and, and Navy Reserve top dogs, they all work in there. I know we got the, the Pentagon North over here on post, but the very top people probably should be somewhere close to the governor. So let's say it's 10,000 square feet, and let's say you give them $1,000 per square foot, because there will be things that the military needs in there that you might not need in other buildings. It might cost a little more, it might not, but you come to about $10 million. And various office buildings, let's say for whoever, winds up with another 50,000 uh, square feet times $700. That comes to $35 million. Okay. That's 321,000. I'm sorry, 321,500,000 in all. Okay. Plus a smooth mill for each legislator to move them up here. Now, a lot of them don't need to move, but we're just going to round it up and make it easy math and say every single one of them does. That still comes to $384 million. Okay, landscape, landscaping and roads, maybe another $200 million. So now you're up to $584 million, which is about a little bit, slightly more than half of the price that was quoted to you back in 1976. And now here we are, 47 years later, and this is what the real price would be. All right, so if we had this and you built a bridge from Anchorage, I think they should do that causeway to the Kenai, but the people in Nikiski probably wouldn't be that keen on that. There's ways to get around that too, but that's another that's another show for another day. But with the bridge, they said seven hundred million to a billion is probably a little more. But even let's say it cost a billion, you're still only up to a billion five hundred eighty four thousand. I'm sorry, one billion five hundred eighty four million dollars. Are you seeing it now? This is 2023, folks. Do you see how you've been lied to all this time? And everybody's out there right now saying, Bruce, you're lowballing this. No, I'm not. You've been lying to us all along. That's the problem. You've lied to the people that you swear that you raised your hand and said you'd represent, and you lied to us. Are you seeing it now? If we're up to Bruce, the Capitol would be designed and built from the ground up. And if it were up to Bruce, it would be named after Judge Wickersham. And as a matter of fact, in all of my books, when it talks about the, uh, you know, my, my what if books, the, ter the uh, capital city is called Wickersham, Alaska. I think that would be very appropriate. But just like the rest of it, that would, that's something that should be left up to the people. I'm sure there would be people who would say, you know what, we, we need to call it Stevens. I, I loved Senator Stevens. I looked him in the eye and shook his hand one day and said, Senator, I would take a bullet for you. And I've been in a position to have to take, make those kind of decisions. Have you? And you know what that humble giant did? He glanced down at his shoes and said, well, it's good to have people that you feel that way about. We sure do miss you, Ted. Now, it's a new cool thing nowadays to say, well, I'm all for them moving the legislative session, but I don't want to. Let's keep the Capitol in Juneau. Okay, that's a good idea. Let's do that. Let's move the, cap the, the legislative session to the rail belt so that the little cutworms, those filthy little termites, the lobbyists are still in Juneau making and cooking up the crooked deals. Are you seeing what they're doing down there in Fortress Juneau, in Island Juneau that you can't approach? Folks, you better wake up. You better start demanding better. Do you really think just moving these people to the local area is going to fix anything? You got to move the whole shebang, baby. You got to move it all. 
Say, well, uh, well, 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 Juno will wither and die. You got a handful of people hold the entire state hostage. That's too bad if it withers and dies. Look what Bill Clinton did to, to catch a can. When he killed uh, the Tongas, that city went from the fourth largest city in the state to a city about the size of Wasilla. Like that. But they soldiered on and they survived. I believe that Juno could probably survive, but they don't need to be the capital. Not anymore. They've had their, their, they've had their bite at the apple for too long. So, while Congress meets somewhere uh, around here for 90 days, 120 days, and decides just momentous things like to make the 30-06 the official rifle of the state, I know, I just insulted your favorite senator. What have you done for me in the last 60 years, sir? Our economy is circling the drain. And that's what you thought was important. Or, Madam Senator, we should have the official Alaska Marmot Day because we don't have groundhogs in Alaska. He he he, look how cute I am making up something like this when we only have 90 days to fix things. And the rest of you people actually voted on it. I'm ashamed of you. And this is what they thought was important. Again, as our economy is circling the drain, this is what they thought was important. I wasn't going to touch on this, but I'm going to. Speaking of the economy to, to, uh, circling the drain, I've got a friend who's been striving to, to open up a food truck. Now, this is under Anchorage law, but he has gotten the runaround for months, months trying to get this thing open. And finally, the, the people that are the approving authorities, they let it slip that if he had just a temporary um, permit to open the thing, well, that's really easy. Then they started ch changing their tune on that. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, fellow Alaskans, if you ain't catching on now, you ain't ever going to, man. This state is so business unfriendly because they want it to be a park. And it's going to stay that way until you stand up and show your guts. And again, while these people are robbing you blind and they're here in the local area, if they were to have the legislative session here, they're down there. They're, they're, they're little servants. They're little, actually, they're handlers. They're puppet masters are still in you blind. Because those are the people that come up with the legislation. When was the last time you think one of your legislators sat down with pen and paper or computer and wrote something original? I, and I've put this challenge out here, here before. When was the last time any of you in Juneau or at the city councils or anything else had an original idea of your own? And if you have had, when was the last time you had an idea that really did some real good to prosper our state? Yeah, we've got oil and I love it. We got coal. We can't get it out of the ground. We got timber, can't do a thing with it. We got fish, but Chinese trawlers show up out here off our shores and take every fish before they can get back in the river. Are you catching on, Alaska? Some of you people in the House and in the, in, in the, in the Senate, you need to go. In fact, I'd say 99% of you need to go. So, say, Bruce, how in the world are you going to pay $1.5 billion? Well, let's think about that. We pulled out of Afghanistan and left. 90 or $85 billion worth of equipment behind. Just wrote it off. We, I think uh, the last I heard, we had sent $200 billion to Ukraine. Just wrote it off. And no, I'm not one of those people that says, yeah, uh, pay, uh, Putin's in there doing the, uh, the God's work. No, I'm not. He's not. He's an evil man. I'm not crazy about Zelensky either. I have a problem with one country invading another and taking away their territory. Some of you justify that. But I ask you, and you know who I'm talking to. Wasn't that what Hitler did when he took Austria? Actually, that went kind of peacefully, but he took Sudetenland under the same premise. These people are German speaking. Well, I've been to Eastern Ukraine and most of the people there consider themselves Russian. Okay, we got a lot of people here in Alaska that probably would do the same thing. And I say, oh, should we chop part of Alaska off and give it to Russia? We send billions upon billions to the border. Money being thrown away. Here's something that I've talked about for a long time, and most of you will poo-poo this the second it comes out of my mouth, and you'll throw up the same stupid arguments. That Here's the thing. If we asked for the 2030 Olympics, we'd have it just like that. We could have had the 2026 Olympics just for the asking, because nobody was asking for it. If we had the 2030 Games, I believe that's the, the next Winter Olympics after the one that's coming up soon, I think. Anyway, whatever. There are some coming very quickly. They're up for grabs. What if we asked for them? 
What if we had a governor with the smarts to do something like that? Say, Bruce, that'll cost billions of dollars. No, no. Billions come into your area because of the Olympics. We could come up with the money for that. But what if we did that and say, okay, we're going to build a uh, Olympic village, wink, wink. And there's going to be one of the buildings here that'll look, man, a heck of a lot like a governor's mansion. And there's going to be another one right here that looks a heck of a lot like a Capitol building. What if we had one that looks like, um, I don't know, um, a legislative office building and a Supreme Court building and so forth. You getting me? And then when the Olympics are over, we just say, you know what? You don't have an excuse now. The capital city is sitting right there waiting for you to move into. Are you catching on, Alaska? Are you getting it now? It's about time that you start expecting a little bit better out of your legislators. May God bless you. May God bless this glorious state of ours. And we'll talk to you again real soon. And now, back to Blue Gold. Well, that's our show for this week. If caffeine's watching, I'll be coming home right after the meeting. On behalf of Howard and the whole gang up here at Marmot Lodge, don't waste your vote. <laughs>